Ya la la la. L I A V E R P O W. I can't spell clearly, guys. Taking a piss here, you know. I can't actually wee number, Stephen, isn't it? I can't actually wee number. It's cracking, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. Oi! Get your air cut! Hello and welcome to this Monday's edition of Movie News here at MBE. Uh, we'd just like to thank you once again for joining us here on our YouTube channel and of course our Twitch stream. We hope you all had a lovely weekend. We certainly did. Plenty of booze involved, John, wasn't there? Yes. Steve, Saturday. I'm concerned that you're looking way too far over to the side That's there. That's okay. That I will shimmy bit. over while we're talking here, John. But, um, there we there go. was a lot of drink, Stephen, involved on Saturday. And uh, quite frank, I'm getting too old for it. And I uh, ended up <laughs> in a coma on my bed. So what's the key takeaway from that weekend? Don't drink. John, I'm Don't glad drink. we didn't commit to doing anything on Saturday night and yeah. involved with uh, our YouTube channel. Well, we've done that before, Stephen. We, of course, reacted to the Cats trailer <laughs> yeah. and we were both steaming. <laughs> and if you look back at our Cats yeah. reaction, you'll see the thumbnail. Ah, yeah. look, absolutely. Stoned out my napper. John, listen, apart from doing videos on this YouTube channel uh, when, we're, the topic, uh, when we're drunk... If you've not, it's okay, don't worry I don't about think it. I have. I may we've, have also did, we've also did shows when we had COVID as well, so I was looking back at them today. Yeah. Funnily enough, I looked back at my last show before I had to take a week and a half <laughs> yeah. off because I was fever. I was already kaput by that point, wasn't and I? Yeah. I recall some twat putting in the comments, <coughs> uh, oh he has you sound strange. Your voice is weird because I've got fucking COVID, mate. <laughs> that thing that's killed three million people. I've got yeah. it and I'm doing a show. You yeah. ungrate, ungrate now, John, fucker. Um, we have got a few things we would like to talk about tonight. Uh, but before we do, Let's see, we Steve, are is it the right going... topic? It's not. Oh, I'll okay. change it. Before that, John, now. we're going to talk about something we are planning to do in the next few weeks. Yes. One Sunday. We've not confirmed the date or times yet. We were working out times earlier on today. Uh, in regards to a uh, Q&A that we're going to be setting up very shortly for yes. our community. Now, John, it's very difficult, of course, because half our community is, well, a third of them are from the UK, a third of them from India, and a third of them from the US. And there's a so, couple from Brazil and further yeah, afield. Yeah, the majority of them, um, you know, and, and it's really just trying to work out a time that suits all. So we've narrowed it down and we will be announcing that very, very shortly. But the gist of the Q&A is going to be very light-hearted. It's going to just, no structure really, just come in, have a chat, fire some questions our way. Uh, we'll also be taking questions via email uh, through the website as well, which we'll put up on a graphics card very, very soon. It's going to be in the next few weeks anyway. We have a few followers on the blog, Stephen. Quite yeah. a few. Yeah, that's it, John. Exactly. You know, and we'll put something on the website as well. Probably the same graphic, actually. And yeah, we'll get it going. But I'm looking forward to it, John. I don't know about yourself. Yeah, Stephen, I'm always looking forward to speaking. I love speaking about myself and about movies. That's why I do this. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyone that's on YouTube or any streaming platform that says they are a wallflower, they don't <coughs> like speaking, they are fucking liars. <laughs> They're attention freaks. They like speaking. 
So I'm quite happy to sit and speak for an hour, two hours, whatever it may be about yep. myself. Do you know Even twenty minutes, I don't give a shit. Well, that's the thing. We don't know what the duration will be. It just really depends on the day, doesn't it? But mm. um, we're going I'll to take my Zeus juice pre-workout, and I'll yeah. be speaking for three hours. Yeah, I mean, we'll ha- we're not going to have any structure as sort. We're not doing what we do in movie news. We're not doing what we do in reviews and reactions and stuff like that. Stephen, I tell it's you, it's a bit rigid at times. But I tell you this: we're on Twitch, and uh, Twitch is obviously more catered to long form yeah. streaming. So our show and the structured way we do the shows isn't the best fit. Nine no, times out of ten for Twitch. So. We're in the show and sort of talk show. Yeah. Genre or whatever section of Twitter. But yeah. our Twitch. So if we actually start doing this, man, as a little if it pops well yeah. and we enjoy it, we could do this on Twitch. Yeah, there we like go, John. Hi well. there. Hi Mushrif. Welcome. How you doing? In. Thank you very much for coming in yeah. and sharing your time with us. But yeah. um yeah, well listen, we will be announcing obviously the date and time for that very shortly. And we might have a little bit of a list of topics that we might want to talk about. Doesn't What's your favourite drink, Stephen? It doesn't have to be uh, Coca-Cola. Uh, simple yes. as that. It's not Iron Brew, it's Coca-Cola. Oh, I love them too. I liked Iron Brew before they changed it, John. Uh, the actual 1909 one, I don't mind. I no, don't think you like it as much, no, do you? No, it's caffeine. I, I don't sure. mind it. Yeah, I don't mind it at all, but I don't like the, the new version of Iron Brew. This is great how we're talking about this already. <laughs> we're supposed to be saving this for that Sunday. Yes. But, What's but, your favourite coffee, Stephen? Ellie, <laughs> no, it's not, not nice coffee. La, La Vaza. No. Yeah, well, that's, that's the yeah. quite the general thing, you know. Yeah, ask is just mundane shite and we'll yeah. answer. It's unscripted. That might be a good tagline for the actual show, John. Unscripted, MBE. unchained, unscripted, unplugged, rough and ready. Well, I hope we are plugged. So well, Stephen, if you want to see us rough and ready, go back about six months. No, mm. actually, probably longer about. 10 months and watch the first live shows and you'll see yeah. Rough and Ready. John, wow. one of our first um, live things we did was the Matrix review we did. Mm. I think we tested it out in a review first and it was very rough. You'll probably be the last commenter, Mushreef, on this show to be fair because it's not a great headline but thank you for coming in. I don't know, John, but that, we'll move but on anyway. Ourselves, Dean, there isn't yeah. a lot of news, isn't there? No. Um, you've done your best. It's, yeah. I like the headline. I'm a big conjuring John, fan. It's funny because normally on Monday you've got all this weekend stuff to talk about but it's it's mostly all the same kind of stuff. There's speculation in regards to, uh, well not speculation, I think it's confirmation about uh, Dave Batista done with Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy, that kind of thing. There was a lot of news about that. Well, I don't think so. I, I think the characters went as far as they can go, let's be yeah. honest with you. There's no arc there now from, you know, it was very interesting in that first volume about, obviously, the loss of his family Thanos, and where that yeah. was going to go, but that's been taken away from him now. Yeah, so because Thanos is dead. Yeah. So you see, yeah. And he's doing diff- different <clears> things, isn't he, really? He's kind of often doing Zack Snyder stuff on yeah. Netflix, so... He's, he's got a career ahead of him, Stephen. Yeah. He's following these sort of I don't Dwayne think he's done path. with James Gunn, though. I think they're going to work again together. Hope so. I hope so as well. Because he's hilarious, tracks. We're going to talk about the headline, John, anyway. That is yes. obviously the thumbnail and the headline. It's all about the Conjuring 3 director previews, just how dark his new film gets. This is coming in from screen right. The Conjuring 3 Wait, director, intro. Michael Chaves, says, The <laughs> devil made me do it gets pretty dark, and that's a statement like that. It just the is hyperbole. I'm going Best to be time. on the screen here, Steve. Yeah, John, this show um, is a shambles. So listen, I'm going to just uh, G- I'm going to G- read his G- quote. It's actually quite a big quote. Um, well, but what's when asked on? how he approached the case at the centre of the movie, Chave said he wrestled with his own beliefs and how or if he should apply them to the film. The director says that the while, market, while marketing may say that each and every Conjuring movie is the darkest yet, he truly believes the devil made me do it will prove this statement true in more ways than one. Chave said this because of the real life aspects of the case, including the murder at the film's centre. Now, yes. the question he was asked, John, was do you believe the Warren story literally? How do you approach this particular case? And Michael Chave said, yeah. It's a really good question. I totally wrestled with it. I think that up to this point, just being a fan of it, the question of whether I believed in it wasn't really brought to the forefront. When I got the script, I started reading about the case. This is a very different case than other Conjuring mm. movies. There's always the marketing spin of, this is going to be the darkest Conjuring movie yet. But in a lot of ways, this really is the darkest Conjuring movie yet. There's a real victim. There's a real man who was killed, and we are telling the story of the murderer. We are telling the story of, of the other guy all of a sudden, and I had asked myself, especially growing up a Catholic, what do I believe and what is going to but be the, my point of view of this movie? That is a question that I honestly still have been wrestling with. I think we all wrestle with our faith, and ultimately what I believe has to take a back seat. It's the Warren story, and it's Arnie's story. Great yes. quote, John. It is, and Stephen, look at that image. Yeah. Oh, I have Jesus. to say, um, 
did I re- uh, react to this on my lonesome Steve you in the did John, yeah. yeah. That was horrific. That scene. Yeah. This little Whoa. kid is getting destroyed in this trailer. He kind of flips backwards. His yeah. body actually snaps backwards. Uh, so it is. It's looks <laughs> like Nicola Sturgeon. It does. Uh, <laughs> he looks like Nicola Sturgeon mixed <laughs> with a certain relative of mine. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, Stephen. No. Uh, oh, I'll tell you off here. Okay. Joke uh, uh, And Stephen, ob- <laughs> Stephen, obviously this, in- <laughs> this interests me. You'll know who I'm talking about now, Stephen. Uh, this interests me uh, because I'm a big fan of The Conjuring, as you do know, Stephen. I've loved the first one and I, I love the second one. That aside, I'm going to nitpick on one thing. There's real victims here. Yeah. We have the... Murder, the, the, obviously the victim, we have the killer, this story. <clears throat> there was a real victim in the first Conjuring movie. There was a real victim in the second one. The, the, the victim in the second one being the little girl who was being possessed by a poltergeist in Yorkshire. And it's based on, it was actually a real event, Stephen, that happened in real life. I don't know if it was true. I don't really believe in ghosts myself, so no. I think she was full of it. Just jumping for the camera and stuff like that. But it was based on a real story anyway. And if it was real, this old guy who had a stroke in his chair and died alone and was found days, weeks after and was haunting this little girl in this family. That was a real victim. So yeah. I don't agree with that. But Stephen, I, look, I do agree with the, the whole darkness thing. It does have to be darker, grittier, different because the first two movies follow the same premise. They were in a house. It was the Warrens investigating. It was stuck to the one location pretty much nearly the whole movie. <clears throat> They're opening it up here. It's expanding the, the locations, the story. It's a little bit yeah, more expansive for lack yeah. of a better word. We've got this murderer, this case, him pleading insanity. Pretty much, he, the devil made him do it. He was possessed. How that's going to play out the dynamic for the family, the killer, the Warrens try to yeah. uncover it. They're going to get shit from the family because they're backing this guy up, and they'll just suggest that you killed him. Yeah. There was no devil. Why are you backing this guy up? Uh, look, it'll be interesting. John the has it real came to the point though for the franchise that they have to expand a little bit more. Yeah, and. Uh, is this based on true events or is it speculation? Is it's, it's based on true events. Yeah, inspired the number. by true events. You know, that's the other way well, to get around it, John. Because well, the, the one in Yorkshire definitely happened. Yeah. I read up Amityville, it. John, that was a true thing as well, wasn't yeah, it? But yeah. I think, obviously, it was more sort yeah. of glamorised, uh, if you can even... Well, there was a famous that. photograph, Steen, of a little kid who, uh, photographed in the, the balcony in Amityville. Mm. I don't know if you've seen that photograph. It was the they left cameras behind, and there was a little kid looking yeah. through the, the door. It looked fucking real to me. I've got to tell you, yeah. uh, haunting. Jo- well, John Namityville horror, the, the original movie, the one with uh, Brolin, um, Josh, his uh, dad. I can't remember oh, his I don't know. name. And uh, Margot Kidder. Um, that that shook me, uh, that, and I'm not really that bothered about horror films, but. I think it's because I was told at the time I was I was young as well. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was seeing films that I shouldn't have been seeing. It was when like I was me. Young. Nightmare on Elm Street yeah, when I was Halloween. six. Halloween, you know, films that traumatise you. But <laughs> I think the, the aspect of that was because that was based on true events as well. Freaked me out a little bit. Um, but um, Brolin, can't remember his name. James, James, James Brolin. Brolin, yeah, great actor. Josh looks like him. He's his ringer now. Um, but it was a great film, John. Fantastic. And Stephen, look, that's something that's necessary. You need that to have it rooted in a, a bit of realism because yeah. it does, it adds a, an edge to it. If you, as a viewer, are going in and realising this is based on real events, I mean, there was something, I can't recall what it was. It may have actually been a documentary, actually, on Netflix about the, uh, what was he called again? The killer over in LA, California. He was going into people's, the night prowler or something. Mm. He was going into houses and killing people and shooting people in the head. It immerses you when yeah. you realise this is a real event, it's not <coughs> fantasy. You start reading into it and looking at it. This will be the same if this yeah. is based on a real case. I'm not aware myself, but I presume it is because most of these Conjuring movies, they will be heightened up, Stephen. There was yeah. no nun hunting Vera Famiga's character. There was no fucking stuff like that going on, but it was based on real events. Yeah. John, I think as well, I think with the franchise as well, they have tried other things and expanding the universe. And it's and n- not really worked, has it? No. Uh, so I think, I think they're going to try and stick to the the formula of the actual original films. And the reason it hasn't worked, Steam, is because James Wan hasn't been involved, and James Wan yeah. isn't involved in this. It's obviously Michael Chavez. They're stepping away. He'd done the first Chaves, two movies. As I called him. Chaves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Stephen. I'm not Mexican. Uh, it does sound like a Mexican name. Hugo mm. Chavez. Is that even the right word? I don't even know. It's fucking Chavez. Um, Chavez. Chavez. <laughs> and obviously, with him coming in, I think he was involved in a prior project. I don't know which one, but he was involved in one of the previous sort of expanded <coughs> stories. 
this will make or break it, man. Whether he's got the touch of a James Wan, or like a James Wan to come in and also get performances out of these two excellent actors, Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson. I always want to say sure. <laughs> I was about to say that, yeah. He sees away, sadly. So I'm intrigued, Stephen. I can't wait. I enjoyed no. the trailer. It had enough little jump scares. A little kid on the bed, the waterbed, the hand coming out, him snapping back. I love that when that happens. The Nun was a shite movie, but that Mother Superior neck crack mm. was unnerving. So I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to these two characters coming back. They make it watchable. They've yeah. got great chemistry. They mimic what the actual Warrens were like. I think the 70s they were investigating stuff in yeah. the 80s. So it's going to be very intriguing to see if this makes or breaks the franchise and expanding it out and away from this haunted house element. And then obviously if it is darker, we'll find out if he's just buffing here. Because we're used to directors and filmmakers buffing us. Yeah. If you've watched WandaVision, you'll know what I'm talking about. Can't wait for this guest cameo. I've wanted to work with this actor for years. Can't wait for this, can't wait for that. They were fucking lying. So yeah. I don't trust these filmmakers, but I hope it is darker because it has to be dark and gritty. The biggest That's reveal it it. of that last episode of One Division was Quicksilver's real name. Yeah, Ralph Boner. <laughs> We're going to move on now, John, to our next topic. <laughs> Evan Peters deserves uh, better. Yeah, I I'm think, still going to John, I, I think he's going to be rewarded in some way for fucking that better. by Kevin Feige in the future. Perhaps maybe when the mutants do Stephen, come into I tell you this, I think he's a witness protection guy. Um, I think he has changed his name because he's in the witness protection and that's what you do. Yeah. I think we'll find out that he has indeed came from a different verse or something. I yeah. think I think he's real. I yeah. genuinely that don't think you bring Evan could Peters could be classified in. at the moment, yeah. yeah. You yeah. don't bring that guy back, man, to do that. No. And if he did come from a, a multiverse, John, and another universe, it's kind of letting the cat out of the bag before we, we even get there. With I think, we'll, I think there'll be a review. Uh, I think yeah. there'll be a review on Multiverse of Madness or Spider-Man 3. I think it'll be Multiverse of Madness. Well, we're going to stick with the MCU now, John, and our next topic it is Eternals 2 reportedly already in development at Marvel. Now, I'm reading this from Screen Rant, John, but uh, John Kempier, a great YouTuber. Um, Gianni. A great guy. Giovanni. Yeah. Um, gets a lot of flack from a lot of people. Yeah. Um, Tadgers. Yeah. Jealous people. Most notably, um, the sort of Geeks and Gamers variant. Yeah. Well, no, I, mean I, like, well. I, I like Jeremy. Yeah. I like yeah. Geeks and Gamers. Um, I think they kind of do that stand for the whole identity to politics thing, Stephen. You know, we are liberal, we're left wing, they are kind of more right wing, but I firmly believe in today's society you need people from different sides of the political divide to come and have a conversation, Yeah. take parts of what they don't like, what they like, bring it together, be constructive and then come out with a common vision if you like a common John. fucking it's thing common, common sense that's common what sense yeah. and today more than ever on social media <coughs> it's like a tribal warfare the left fight the right it's echo chambers no one's listening nothing's getting done so I like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers despite the fact he's a right winger and a Trump supporter and I hate Trump mm. I'm a Biden man despite being Scottish <laughs> and you just have to look what Biden's doing just now with the vaccines and stuff he's been vindicated he's a fucking great guy uh, screw you bitches but needless <laughs> to say I'm an echo chamber uh, tribalistic but Stephen I don't know why, where that came from um, I think I was saying there was people his community they tend yeah. to go after campaign don't they it's a little bit aggressive tribalistic funnily enough yeah. and he doesn't deserve it he's a great YouTuber that's a lot of our inspiration Stephen for shows and stuff yeah. Came from Campia, the AMC movie talk days, obviously going into Collider. He's a great guy. I yeah. do enjoy him. Yeah, I, I like his show, John. It's one of the best shows on YouTube. But, John, um, just in regards to obviously Eternals 2, this anticipation and confidence has reportedly translated to the studio's move to develop a sequel to the film six months before it's hit theatres. And John Campia revealed that the studio was hard at work on the follow up, even though they didn't announce any such thing in the Phase 4 preview. Campia likened it to how the studio has yet to announce Avengers 5, despite the fact it's all but guaranteed to be developed of the sizzle reel and a Eternal 2, Campea said. It's basically the same reason that Avengers 5 and Eternal 2 weren't announced. They were only announcing those films up to 2023 that have verified release dates. There are over 20 plus projects on the board. Uh, we all know they're going to be an Avengers 5 and there's going to be an Eternal 2. John, well, before I even read this article, um, it's a given that, yeah. that uh, apart from the Incredible Hulk, has there been another MCU film that has not had a sequel? No. Stephen, uh, yeah, look, and obviously Spider-Man's the, the kind of one that shocks at where they've not got control, but that's because Sony are controlling the yeah. IP. 
No, Stephen, look, I expect it as well. I expect it to be an eternal so when you make a mistake. <laughs> Try to utilise these wide shots a lot more. Yes. We have two very expensive cameras and we don't do enough to utilise said cameras. We kind of condense ourselves into a split screen. Stephen, I expect it to be an eternal stew. Um, I expect it to be hugely successful. For the reasons that we're going to get into in a, a little aside from the main topic, yeah. Faggy's been out gushing about this movie. It's obviously Chloe Zhao that's directing it. She's the current Best Picture, Best Director holder in the Academy Awards. I says when I was speaking about it, I don't know the context of why I was speaking about mm-hmm. it, but needless to say, I don't think there's many Academy Award winning directors involved with Marvel, proje- Marvel projects. Mm-hmm. Taika's also won, I think he won for Jojo, I think it was a screenplay or something. But there's not many. So when she's involved in the, ne- uh, the next big ensemble release for Marvel, it's huge. So he's anticipating potential Best Picture uh, nominations for this movie. So when you're on that calibre of obviously creative brilliance with Chloe Zhao, you're on that calibre of brilliance when it comes to the movie, it only stands to reason that it's going to be successful in Marvel Disney's eyes. It'll come out when the pandemic's on the wane. Hopefully it'll be a huge success at the box office. That will then guarantee a sequel. Even before it comes out, Steve, we're going to get a sequel, as you did say. There's loads of... Trilogies, standalone sort of movies, yeah. Captain America, obviously Iron Man, Spider Man now, Guardians of the Galaxy, they've all got trilogies, double releases, so I can't see how this movie doesn't get a sequel. And with that cast, yeah. I mean, Kamal Nanjiani's just turning it's, it's, it up it's, it's, in the gym, man, he's yeah. unreal. The MCU, Unbelievable. Uh, Marvel's a, a unique studio, John, because um, if it was any other film uh, in any other franchise, you'd be going kind of jumped the gun here before the actual original film has been released. But this is a unique situation. As you've just rhymed off tons of the characters that have all with Thor, Captain America, you know, Iron, Man, yeah. Iron Man, they've, they've all had sequels. Um, and these sequels were planned. Ant-Man. Before the first Avenger came out, John, you can be guaranteed that uh, the Winter Soldier was already planned yeah. and, and Civil War was already planned. That's Steve, these guys, can be assessed, 20 plus projects in the works. These guys are competing uh, planning uh, the next 10 years worth of movies, yeah. projects, how these stories are all interlinking, how these characters are going to appear in the next Ensemble Avengers movie, how they're going to appear in a mini Ensemble Captain Marvel 2 movie, they're planning everything mm-hmm. in advance, man. They had the Infinity Saga, I don't know if you've seen, Stephen, the sort of early builds in Infinity War that were floating around, they had the actual story in place, they had a working sort of visual effects story and then they put it all together no, years after that, John, I think no. it was like two it was around about the time of Civil War or something like that they had the actual movie visually in some form sitting there Amazing. and then they put it into the actual better I don't know visual form yeah but John, Stephen, had, um, did you not have some um, we did yeah Stephen I'll bring it up there. here there's an article um, I don't know if this is the article to be honest uh, it, is, it is the article so we'll bring it up we'll quickly try it. I think it's 8 is what I've macroed to get us both on the screen, it's clearly not. No. What is going on here? That's okay. Let's do it again. Nope, not working. There we go. Eight is to change the alignment of the actual articles in these sort of captures. Steve, we can't see it, so we'll move it up and try and get it there. This yeah. is the quote from Kempe, uh, from Feige. He says this, uh, I'm excited to answer your questions about the future. I'd like to give you a few quotes about when Eternals wins Best Picture, when Avengers 5 is the biggest movie of all time, so let's bank the quotes as well. So Stephen, Campier's writing what he says, we know we're getting Avengers 5 because he's already speaking about Avengers 5. We know we're going to get Eternals 2 because he thinks it's got a chance. They're saying half jokingly, I don't think he is joking, he thinks it's got a chance of winning or at least getting nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars, so it's a given. Mm. Stephen, what do you make about those comments, man? Do you think he was joking? Or do you think with Chloe Zhao in charge of this movie, hot in the heels of Nomadland's success, do you Mm. think that this has a chance, because apparently he showed it to Disney directors or executives and they were blown away by the first cut of the movie. Yeah. So what do you make of that? Do you think it's got a chance? Um, at this moment, yeah. But I don't know between now or when the Eternals is going to be released and the, the Academy Awards come around, what's going to be released out with comic book films, that is. No um, Golden Globes next year? <clears throat> what do you mean? Golden Globes next year. No, no, they're, no not, Globes. no, they're not holding a Golden Globes. Well, it's a joke anyway, isn't it? Let's be honest. The actual event's yeah. a joke. When you've got... Oh, but is it not to do with the actual network? Is it? Host it? Oh, is it host it? Can they, can they yeah. not get Ricky Gervais back or something like that? Is that the, I mean the actual uh, network, the... I don't know what yeah, it's network like EMC is. or something. Yeah, not something. EMC. Um, um, 
ABC or something. What the fuck yeah, it's called? NBC or something. I yeah, don't know. it's a shite network. Stephen, it's a joke. The ceremony's a joke anyway. Mm. Stephen, you've got movies that are clear drama movies getting nominated in comedy categories just because they can't fit them into the main drama category. It's a joke. It dilutes the meaning of the awards. Yeah. And to be frank, it has absolutely no relevance to the Oscars and stuff like that. The big prize at the end of the year. We've seen it. We've seen the, what was it from Promising Young Woman or something like that. Yeah. She won the Golden Globe. Frances McDormand didn't win. No Madland won for Best Picture. Chloe Zhao won for Best Director. It's a joke. I'll say one thing about the Golden Globes. I, I don't. I, I totally Gave agree with Golden what Globes. you're saying, but I'll say mm. about one thing about the Golden Globes. I do like prefer the relaxed sort of yeah it's, that is it's better it's less stuffy less yeah. up their own arse isn't it really yeah Kicks but that's why that. the, the Academy Awards mean so much to people I suppose because it is the, the sort of real deal what is the seriousness of um, you know being nominated at least by your peers you know, I tell, I'll tell you the two people who will be happy Joaquin Phoenix because <clears> he doesn't have to go on about vegan menus and saving the world so he'll be happy because he's a nervous fucking wreck when he goes on the stage and Melissa McCarthy because she doesn't have to bring her own sandwiches to feed everybody because yeah. she comes in late and misses the actual dinner so those two people will be delighted <laughs> and obviously the network execs who don't have to bring in Ricky Gervais again and cringe at him destroying all of these pompous fake fuckers they'll be happy as well Yeah. and I'm of course talking about the shite actors I'm not talking about the ones I like because I'm a hypocritical shit yeah, I'm John, not going to talk about Brad Pitt and stuff like that he's yeah. alright bringing it back to <laughs> Eternals now <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cut you off here. but uh, it just it just makes me more excited for this film's release I can't wait to see this film we've been talking about this what how many years now? two two years now two years um, and we've Call got Con, it? A, a kind of trailer that came out yeah, maybe even three years what was it a trailer it was a it was a phase four reveal yeah, dates and stuff was, and we got yeah, obviously Angelina Jolie's yeah. character pop up briefly but we, we got a be, shot of them we must be getting a trailer soon even yeah. a teaser soon we well seeing the fact we've got Venom 2 his trailer yeah. coming out that's the beginning I think we're going to see yeah. more of a Batman we've got to see something of Shang-Chi again but we actually got a Shang-Chi trailer recently so probably not Eternals we get Black Widow we've got more to see there's hundreds of movies coming out Stephen yeah. I'm excited about comic book movies and we've seen barely any of them Spider-Man No Way Home it's finished shooting I'm pretty sure that must be enough so to give us a teaser done. but it'll be tactical Stephen it'll be not to reveal too much they, they will play this perfectly because so Spider-Man 3 is the last movie yeah. of the year it's kind of connected to WandaVision and Multiverse the so secrecy. they'll not want to give things away yeah well exactly John I think that's the difference isn't it you know, obviously we're far from home and uh, homecoming. Mm-hmm. Um, there wasn't much connecting stuff going on there, apart from obviously what's Civil already War happened in Civil yeah. War, which was prior to obviously uh, homecoming. But that's the difference, and I, um, that's why we're not getting anything. It's not always to do with Tommy McGuire. It's not always to do with Andrew Garfield. It's more to do with the connective sort of tissue between One Division and Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. This is a unique position Spider Man finds itself in. Spider-Man films that is um, and I just can't wait I can't wait I think by the time <laughs> we get to the there Stephen big on wait. I do okay, apologise no don't worry about it that's one of the things I can't wait by the end of this year we're going to have a clearer picture of how phase 4 is going to you know the direction it's going to yeah. go in we kind of get an idea obviously with the reveal uh, you know of what's coming next in phase 4 but once we see the events unfold in Spider-Man 3 can't wait. Yeah. Stephen, I'm the same, man. I can't wait for the future <laughs> of this Phase 4. I'm, I'm a huge Marvel fan, as you can probably tell. <laughs> the two of us are. I did read about uh, I have us. read about yeah, Seth Rogen, yeah. Yeah, um, it's a shame, but it's, that is what it is. Cancel culture, isn't yeah. it? Uh, once they, they get these Good allegations. Good friends. Good friends at one point. No, was it Noel Clark, Stephen, uh, who was in Star Trek, he was in Doctor Who, he's had a lot of allegations levelled against him. And I'm firmly in the <clears> category of innocent until proven guilty. Uh, we don't trial people through the press until it's actually proven that they are guilty of what they're being accused so I'm not one for cancel culture I don't like it and when you're separating these two guys I love Pineapple Express who are dynamite in it man uh, so I don't want to see it but mm. it's life he has to cut himself off because this guy's toxic now so it's a shame man we're not going to get yeah. any more sort of I don't know dope head sort of movies is that what you call it I don't know sort of fucking hash joint kind of movies with their stoned out their nappers mm. and insanity ensues it's a shame man but look man was it, uh, did he work on uh, the disaster artist didn't he Seth Rogen yeah. was in that as well I yeah. loved that movie I think he was a director about that with the these allegations yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's a shame we did read about it I read about it earlier and mm. I was dismayed 
for that's yeah. life. And look, as people say, Seth Rogen's no angel. No. He has a couple of skeletons in his closet as well, some ill thought out jokes and stuff like that. So he should think twice. Um, I don't know if James is getting innocent or not. I don't know. I'm not going to no. sit here and back him up. I'm no. not friends with the guy. I don't really care. But hate this cancel culture, man. Yeah. Hate it. What have it done for your man? Blanking on his name. Terrible. Mel Gibson. Yeah. He made some stupid comments when he was <laughs> under the influence. And I don't agree with his comments. But mm. people need to have a chance to grow from their mistakes. And look what he's done. Yeah. In terms of movies, Hacksaw Ridge. And whatever else he's done, I don't know. I think but it's done just the pictures who they want to forgive and forget, John. Mm-hmm. Obviously, James Gunn being one of them. Yeah. You know, and I love James and Gunn. And Amber Heard. And I don't agree with, obviously, his previous comments from yonks ago, as we like to see here in Glasgow. But yeah, he's you make mistakes of. in life, John. We yeah. all do it. We all say things we didn't really mean. We say things that we were pretty ignorant about maybe 30 years ago as well that we dare would not say now. No. Um, but and it's all about, about growth, learning. Yeah. It's about growth yeah, as a human exactly, being. But yeah. no one is perfect. We're all fucking fallible beings. We can make stupid mistakes. We can grow and educate ourselves. But look, I'm perfect, so I can't. <laughs> <That's what laughs> okay. you know. I'm talking about perfect <laughs> specimens here then. Okay, yes. let's move on to our next topic. He's Some might perfect. say Telepathy VJ is that. Now, Telepathy 65, John, second shooting schedule of the VJ Starra to be delayed. We talked about. The first shooting, the rains, yes, uh, being, in Georgia. Yeah, been raining Atlanta. and stuff like that. But this is a bit on, more on the serious side. Now, Telepathy 65 is held by Dr. Filmmaker Nelson Dilip Kumar with Pooja Hedge as the leading lady. We're a big fan of Pooja Hedge, yeah. John. We've been watching a lot of reaction. She's a good looking bird. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that now. Yeah. And now there's, woman, just, yes. John, this is coming in from pinkvilla.com. Now, I'm just going to read, uh, I'll try my best. There's a lot of uh, Indian names in here that I will struggle with, so I apologise in advance. But uh, the makers of Telepathy 65 announced a couple of months back that the film shooting had started in Georgia. They even shared a photo of VJ from the sets of the film while giving us a glimpse of his look. A couple of days back, it was reported that the makers have constructed huge sets of a multiplex complex in Chennai for the second shooting schedule. Now, a new report has come up stating that the second schedule will be delayed owing to the current COVID crisis. Now, I don't know if I want to read the next bit because it's all about Tom Chaco and that's our next topic. So I'm going to bypass that bit, John, and we'll talk about that. It's the second paragraph there, John, earlier the makers. But... um, it is directed by Nelson Dale Kumar, who is also waiting for the release of Doctor with Siva Kath A. Kayan in the lead role. Meanwhile, reports <laughs> about Telepathy VJ's next film are surfacing on social media. Uh, as per the latest report, VJ's next will be directed by Toilwood filmmaker Vamshi Pedipali. VJ was last seen and master directed by Lokesh Kana Garage with Malavika Mohananan as the leading lady and VJ Sevipathy as the main antagonist. Now, John, it's a bit unfortunate, but listen, we're not strangers to what's happening over in India at the moment. It's, no. it's terrible what we're reading. We've talked about it last week as well, John, in regards to the COVID crisis. Um, the, the, I don't know if it's been too dramatic to say that, you know, the country is on its knees at the moment it's a humanitarian disaster Stephen that's yeah. happening over there uh, last I checked half a million people infected every couple of days or something unbelievable yeah. numbers and I understand the subcontinent is massive and there's loads of people uh, live on that subcontinent but a f- half a million people a day two days I don't mm. know what it was that's terrifying and we know this thing grows exponentially every couple of days weeks it grows it grows and grows but other accounts they are kind of reaching the peak shortly so I think that will Calm down, they get the vaccines in. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, the United States and Britain and stuff like that can send some vaccines John, over and save some lives. I think it's fair to say that, uh, not just obviously Telepathy 65, but most big productions that are in the works just now, this was going to happen at some point, this delay. Yeah, I mean, Stephen, it happened over here. We had uh, Mission Impossible 7, 8, what one was it? 7? The Batman. I think of two of them. Obviously, he, that was in Venice when yeah. it. The shit hit the fan in Italy and that broke down. Yeah. Also, he came over to London, the shit yeah. hit the fan here. The Batman, as you say, had to move away from on set shooting to behind the scenes on a on an actual stage in a studio. So they had to revamp the entire look of the movie and fill in things on location when it calmed down a bit. So it's a, just the nature of the game with this COVID shit that's putting a barrier in the way of multiple film production across the world, also not just Hollywood, but India, everywhere. I presume it's the same in China, Japan, Korea, all of these places. 
So it's a shame, man, but it was inevitable. And obviously, Chennai, I think that's a huge, huge city down the south, and to be able to do it, it's a massive city, man. Mm. So lots of population, lots of people in there. It's obviously going to be dangerous for COVID, so they have to shut things down and put all these guidelines in on the set and make sure it's safe for Tilapathy, everyone involved. Tilapathy's a man of the people. We've seen it. He brought oxygen tanks back from the States to help people out. He, he, he's aware of the situation. He won't want to risk lives on the set by potentially infecting someone. They go infect a grandparent or something and kill them. He won't want that in his conscience. So it's the correct thing to do yeah. to delay it. It'll get done when it gets done. The movie will come out. He'll make money. He's a huge superstar. And this guy's box office school. We've seen it with Master. He drew people out in their droves to support that movie. So regardless if it's delayed a week, two weeks, a month, two months, just like obviously Mission Impossible, the Batman, it will get finished. Yeah. And it will hit the box office and he'll be an absolute superstar once again. Jordan, the unique uh, sort of situation we find ourselves in as well that um, we weren't obviously aware this time last year, we were not aware of Tilapi V VJ. Yeah. Until we our great community introduced us to him. Now we're aware of so we kind we kind of missed the sort of build up and anticipation for Masters release. Yeah. To be honest with you, um, I think perhaps maybe we just got in there one month, two months before its release for that sort of build up. Um, obviously, with the trailer dropping, I think just at the turn of the year, at the yeah. end of last year, I think it might have been. Then obviously, um, Vaffy coming. But John, uh, we're all psyched here. We're all psyched here at MBE for Tilapathy sixty five and going forward for his films releases as well now. Oh, well, Stephen, I think 66. There's, uh, no, it's not. It's actually Vikram. Hey, I'm f- thinking about, obviously, mm. VG, Sefi Pafi's coming. But there's talks Lokesh, Kana Garage, could be directing 66. We know he's worked well with him before. We know he's worked well with everybody. He's an up-and-coming director over there. So I'm excited for the future yeah. for Talatafi. I think he's a cool dude. Um, I love his dancing. I love his singing. I think he's charismatic as hell. And I've seen three of his movies now. Really, really enjoyed Master. I get something out of... Uh, Kaifi and Sarkar it was mixed as hell so I'm, we're Jonah. going to go back and watch more of this guy's movies yeah, and definitely. I know we're going to see some greatness yeah exactly it's, it's something to look forward to and I know as you said John it's not going to delay us too much we will be back on track and production will be you know back where it should be in I the did, next couple of weeks on, on the Sandro comments uh, Stephen Collins I read him up there briefly he's Stephen dodgy. Collins uh, he was in Brewster's Millions wasn't he yeah he's he, I yeah. think he got accused of doing some dodgy shit and on stuff so I'm yeah. not going to oh, well I don't want to go there John but no. I, I can see what Sandro's saying yeah. in regards to that and look at John there is a difference yeah it looks like all male actors are in trouble in Hollywood no actresses in trouble it's so strange it's what's stuff, going on it? in Hollywood yeah. yeah they're empowering and obviously some are going to take it too far and maybe put allegations but I don't know Steve I, I, I do know about Johnny Depp though and I'm absolutely convinced Johnny didn't do the things that are levelled against him I'm absolutely convinced he was stoned out his nap and done some dodgy stuff but Amber Heard is every bit to blame she's a history of abusing and the fact she's not been removed from Warner Brothers projects is it's baffling yeah. just can't believe it honestly but, but it's put um, me off watching Aquaman yeah well that wasn't really first anyway John Aquaman was a good film but I, I can take it or leave it yeah. to be honest with you now especially in hindsight but we're going to move on to our final topic and it's uh, it's all about shines tom chaco joins vj and director nelson Dilip kumar's telepathy 65 we're sticking on uh, we're staying on telepathy 65 here john this yes. is tom chaco shine tom chaco up Stephen. because yeah, well, i'm not going to lie i don't know much yeah. about him but uh, it's an addition john mm-hmm. uh, and millennium actor shine tom chaco has been roped in to play a crucial role in director nelson dalek kumar's telepathy 65 this film will mark his debut in wow, hollywood look at the amount of movies this guy's involved in yeah. what's going on we'll get into that i'm sure <laughs> yeah we will do john uh, awesome. this is coming in from india today dot i n and in. So uh, what I'll do is, John, I'll just read this. I don't think this actual, um, it's a very short... Yes, they keep it um, very succinct yeah. in these articles. It's great. So it's me, John. The uh, so Millennium actor <laughs> Shine Tom Chaco is the latest addition to cast of uh, Telepathy 65. He will be playing an important role in, Nels- in oh, director really? Nelson Dilip Kumar's forthcoming film with VJ, the first schedule of Telepathy 65. Commenced in Georgia in April, just like we said earlier, and went on till the end of the month. After wrapping up the schedule in Georgia, VJ and the rest of the team returned to Chennai. Uh, Shane Tom Chaco has been roped in to play an important role. He's expected to join the team in the second schedule of the film, which is expected to go on floor sometime in June. 
Could mm. be July now. Uh, speaking to the Times of India, Shine said, I am here for discussions. The first schedule of the movie shoot was already over in Georgia. I guess the next schedule was supposed to start soon, if not for the COVID restrictions. Now the team is thinking about June. He also spoke about his fluency in Tamil. I'm not fluent in Tamil yet. I check out Tamil films often and also watch interviews and speeches of Tamil actors like Kamal, Hassan and Ranjan Kanth. Uh, certain yeah. words I don't understand, but overall I can make sense sense of it, that's it, he added uh, the shooting of Telepathy 65 commenced in Georgia in April, Sun Pictures, the production house took yes. to Twitter to share a behind the scenes photo from the shooting spot we've already covered that John, because that yes, was one have. of our thumbnails, which we borrowed <laughs> uh, flip the image, change the <laughs> the gradient <laughs> stuck a trademark the thing on you've it got to do. Things, yeah, things you've got, you've got to, do, to do just to I'm get the message out, John. Searching but up Malaya Lamb, Stephen, and by all accounts, that is the state of Kerala. Yeah. Uh, truly paradisical state. Just unbelievable, man. The water, the curries, just everything, mm. man. An amazing, amazing place I want to visit someday. So that's Malaya Lamb, if yeah. I'm saying it right. Malaya Lamb. It's yeah. southwestern India. Yeah. And again, totally different to, obviously, to me when they do in terms of languages spoken. I presume film industries as well. And again, Stephen, it's interesting to see crossovers here. We're, we're seeing Telugu, a Telugu actor whose name completely eludes me at the moment, getting linked with a collaboration with Telepathy. Now we're seeing a Malayalam actor joining the project. So it shows you that the, the pool of Telepathy is massive. You can mm. bring actors in from all over India. Talk of them doing pan Indian movies as well. We get, we spoke about that, didn't we? Or was yeah. that Vijay? Sefi Pathy? I can't recall. <clears throat> But Stephen, he's absolutely massive, man. It's interesting to see this cast getting filled out um, and how it's going to play out. I think he's playing a con artist in the movie. Yeah. So it's something slightly different. We've kind of seen that, didn't we, in Sarkar? He was a bit of a con man. A bit of a dodgy CEO. <laughs> Kaifi as well, a bit of a con man in that as well. Yeah. Charlton. Yeah. So he's not adverse to playing those roles. That's what I'll say about that. If he opens it up a bit. Stephen, I've been looking at the actor, though. Shine. I'll bring it up. Nine. Bring us both onto the screen. Look at the amount of projects this guy has either completed, is in post, filming, or oh, is in pre-production. Yeah. All in 2021, we've got one, two, three, four completed. One, two, three in post. And the ones that are already two out. Two in filming, yep. Yeah. Already out. Two in pre-production and two announced. So this guy is unbelievably busy. Yeah. He is putting Nick Cage to shame, and Nick <laughs> is one of the busiest guys over here. Yeah. So, very intrigued. Um, I just hope this isn't an actor who is all about, I don't know, what would be the same? Oversaturated. Yeah, it's not yeah. oversaturation. There's another thing I was trying to work out there, but I can't, my brain's freezing up, as ever, when we do these live shows. It's late here. You John, have to, Sandro um, is asking, do you like the Nun movie? Just before we... No. Um, I hated it with a passion, <laughs> man. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was terrible. Really disappointed me. Most of the spin-off movies from the Conjuring universe have disappointed me. Annabelle, terrible. The Nun, was just horrendous mm. for me. Um, I had some moments, but in the main cheap parlour tricks I think it was something Hardy it was the director Corin Hardy or something I don't know disappointed me uh, sadly but that's that's life yeah, lots of things John, disappoint me uh, just going back to uh, Tom Chackle though um, again this is we, we say this every time there's a little bit of news uh, you know released about Telepathy 65 like most films that we're excited to see and we're looking forward to seeing it, it's just great to get some information and we're seeing things fall into place now. Obviously the character he's going to be playing won't have any involvement in the Georgia scenes. Uh, so I yeah. don't know, it just really depends. Uh, you can't really speculate on how big the role's going to be either, unfortunately. Yeah, we can't, Stephen. Uh, but look, time will tell. It will reveal itself at some point. And as I keep saying, excited to see more from Telepathy. It's almost like Min Jong Ho, Stephen. We, we get introduced to these figures, these filmmakers, these actors, personalities and then you want to go down the rabbit hole and see more and more from them because they, they've made an impression on you, so that's certainly been the case with Telatifi. Stephen, final comment I'm going to read to you, you're yeah. right, The Nun is awful it was god awful, <laughs> uh, it wasn't a good movie, they hyped it up, it should have been good that Nun character was haunting throughout a couple of movies and for them to drop the ball, it was terrible, just terrible man for me personally as a fan and for them as the filmmaker shit Excited in the new movie, DiCaprio, is that Flowers of a Killer Moon, the Scorsese movie with Jesse Blemons, Robert De Niro, I'm excited for that as well, mm. cannot wait to see Leo, he's just an absolute tour de force, what a guy. Scorsese film, John. It's Scorsese, Scorsese knows what he's doing, doesn't good. he? Yes, it's going to be fantastic, man, I mean, <laughs> Leo's directing some of the stuff for his character, man, creatively influencing it, it's going to be dynamite, man, and when 
the bold Denaro's in there as well, you know, you're on for something. And when Jesse Plemons, the greatest character actor of all time, is in there getting a leading role, fuck yes, I'm on board. But that's going to sum up the show, it's going to round it up, I should say. You know, having a stroke there, and I've seen some. What's your thoughts on The Conjuring? Uh, this movie, the director Michael Chavez, or Chaves, saying that, Chav. <laughs> Chav, <laughs> saying that it's going to be the darkest yet of The Conjuring franchise. You think that's all bluff, or do you think it's got a bit of truth in it? You can comment both if you get anything to say on it. What do you make about Eternals 2? Potentially already being green lit and happening. Finally, what do you make about Telepathy VG65? This uh, guy, Shine, can't read the name from here. Tackle. Shane, what's his name, Stephen? <laughs> you can read it. Chackle, Shane Chackle, we'll just say that. Joining the project. Is that something you do you know his name? Are you excited about that? I can't see the name, Stephen. I'm blind as a bat. Shane Tom Chackle, I think it is. Uh, eyesight of a 90 year old. Um, and I'm 32. Just turned it as well. So you'd think I'd have good eyesight, but I'm fucking blind as a bat. But you can comment below if you've got anything to say about that anyway. You can also like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube, hit the follow button over on Twitch if you want to see us over there as well, and you'll get it. Bye, Sandro. Thank you for commenting once again. And if you do that, you'll, you'll get it. And if you don't, that's absolutely fine. But till then, guys, that's it for him. Give it in here. Bye-bye. <coughs>